Well, you see, hypothetically, if I was part of a weird hippie cult space odyssey to take a couple hundred humans and establish an exo-colony on a planet that's basically a crossover between The Last of Us and the Super Mario's Mushroom Kingdom, and accessible only by a 20-year voyage through a space wormhole, and I encountered a hostile, lingering, artificial intelligence that was really into, like, like, like zen garden keeping? I would hypothetically have some words to be said about their pathetically wrong arguments for the merits of genociding the human race. So, firstly, I think I'll start with Cal. There's a big, like, oh, no, no, violence, oh, violence, that's bad, violence, no good, uh, thing going on, and, and, and Cal even argues that if you need to use violence to get something for your own benefit of some way or another, or for survival, that it shouldn't be done. Like, if, if you need violence to obtain something, you probably shouldn't have it. And that it means the goal you're trying to accomplish is not acceptable or meretricious. I'm not super on board with this line of thinking. I mean, from a human, societal, cultural, ethical perspective, yeah, you know, avoiding violence is, like, the right thing to do, you know? You don't want to fucking shoot people in the head all the time, but sometimes violence is necessary, and not in, like, a, oh, if someone rings my doorbell, I'm legally allowed to shoot them in the face kind of way, but in almost every single situation, there is a non-violent path forwards. That's generally accepted, but sometimes that path forwards is particularly risky or has many unknown variables. Sometimes the situation is confusing and tricky and sometimes people simply make errors, make mistakes, and sometimes it flat out isn't realistic. Teenage Exocolonist kinda has this, this um, presented narrative conflict between like human supremacy and human like whining like, bitch whining and complaining. Stuff like, oh, humans, they're so arrogant. that they, they think that they're more important than other species, other living beings. They think that they're more important than, like, a, a, a frog or a, or, a, or a butterfly. And while I kind of get the sentiment being reached at, you know, I still think... I still don't think the way they use it make much sense. Like, um... Like, aren't all living beings selfish creatures? Don't wild animals kill each other literally every minute of every day, including non-human living beings that totally reshape the ecological landscape of a, of a region, drive other species to extinction? Isn't it more arrogant to think that every other living being on the planet can engage in violence, as is their biological instinct to do so, but oh, humans can't, they shouldn't? Isn't that thinking that humans are fundamentally on a different plane than other creatures? I mean, humans have more influence and power over the world through technology and stuff, and in their current state of technology and overpopulation and world-spanning communication networks and information spreading, and humans are capable of considering, or rather, inventing the moral implications of eradicating other species, or using violence to achieve some sort of ends. But the very concept of morals and right and wrong is, by extension, an unnatural thing that is a product of human conscious thought. It always genuinely annoys me when people talk about things that are natural or not, because, like, what the fuck does it mean to be unnatural? Forgive my ignorance in, in a even asking this question, but aren't... Aren't literally all things in the physical universe natural? I mean, nobody is using infinity stones to generate artificial matter or energy, right? Humans exist because of the natural course of life on planet Earth, and as a result of the naturally occurring solar shenanigans. Is technology unnatural, even though all technology is made as a byproduct of natural creatures? Uh, creating it, and it's made from universal laws of physics and naturally occurring elements of matter? There are other known species on Earth that use technology, that use simple tools. There are species of animals, sticks, stones, grasses, other things. Birds use engineering principles to build nests, beavers, and dams. Some creatures engage in simple agricultural tendencies. Some creatures are sedentary, and some have set residences. Destruction and violence are also pretty fucking natural. 
species killing each other off for dominance or and subsistence or simply out of evolutionary habit. Natural disasters, floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, fires, droughts, volcanic eruptions, fucking asteroids hitting the planet. That's all natural. The fucking ice age was natural. When people think of the word natural, they tend to think of green plants and shit like that. But in reality, living organisms are an insanely rare anomaly in the known universe. What's natural for a fucking planet is to have no life on it whatsoever and be a collection of minerals and gases. So, now we come to the overseers of the gardeners and their arguments for what it is they're trying to do and why they think humans are, you know, are ball lickers. They do at one point admit that all living beings are ignorant and selfish, but then they say that humans are worse than other creatures simply because they have so much power to influence the state of the world. They're just too strong. Fucking stop praying for my baby, it's too strong. A kind of sinews of peace argument, like denuclearization. I mean, it's also clear that the gardeners are coming at this like... Like, outside observers, they're not entirely reliable narrators. They don't have the whole perspective and all of the facts. They're just seeing a threat and trying to make quick appraisals of what to do. They are genuinely under a hasty impression of the human race and that they are naturally brutish and can't be communicated with and they're coming here to take over the planet and burn it down or something. So if we're to trust that the gardeners are generally well-meaning and truthful in their beliefs, they're not power-hungry individuals or backstabbing liars. Then let's look at why they think what they think. Or just what they think, I don't really give a shit. So, the gardeners have been around for like what, like 20,000 years on this planet, more or less, is about what they say. The AI, co there are AI constructs that um, generate biological forms to inhabit, but mostly exist in a sort of data form that may or may not also be connected to whatever rules of this universe dictate the mechanics of time travel and multiversal shit. The native intelligent life on this planet um, just eventually got to the point where they destroyed all or almost all life on the planet through abusing the limits of its resources and tolerance for various forms of destruction, and then they made the AI fuckers to, like, refurbish the planet, I guess, possibly under the hopes that they'd come back someday, um, although they kind of say that, like, they made the, the gardeners or the AIs just to regulate things, but then they just gave up and left, but just left them running, so maybe they didn't give a shit. But maybe not, and then they, they fucked off on spaceships never to be seen again. The gardeners, um, hate the old native species of the planet that made them, and it's hard to say how much of a sense of self the gardeners have, like, their perception of their existence as conscious individuals or like um, people with will or uh, or individuality what their philosophical or religious beliefs are and how much of a sense of individuality they have we can clearly see they have differences of opinions on matters but anyways their their, their goal is just to preserve life on the planet to make it have a strong ecosystem for organic life now on a speculative level this might imply some things about the gardeners, like, they seem to think that they have their own beliefs and convictions, and but maybe their beliefs about, like, preserving life on the planet and, like, really protecting life are only there because they were literally made by the Convergent Domain to have that objective. Like, like a Doki Doki situa situation where Monica is aware that she's an artificial character, and she's trying to rise above that and, like, have her own agency outside of what was created for her, what she was written to do, and reach beyond the limits of her existence. But at the same time, seemingly unbeknownst to her, what she actually wants and thinks is still, at the end of the day, what she was programmed to want. She's a dating sim character who wants to date the player character. She thinks that by being aware that she was created that she can attain her own agency, but at the end of the day, she can only think things she was designed to think and want things that she was designed to want. E no ma even if she recognizes that fact or not. 
So maybe the gardeners want to preserve the planet, not even because they really have any logical belief system or fucking any thought process that would make them come to that conclusion, but just because it's just the natural thing that pops in their head. I would They were programmed to want to take care of the planet. So like, yeah, of course, that's the right thing to do. So if that belief were challenged, is it possible, like physically possible for them to believe something different or are they categorically incapable of not wanting to preserve uh, a status quo of a biological, of, a, of an ecosystem? Even Sim, he's all like, you know, he's all like risky and shit. He's all fucking, he's all edgy, but he, even he still wants to protect life on the planet. He just has a different opinion on, like, he has, he's of the opinion that it doesn't have to be so stagnant and that life getting wiped out on the planet wouldn't even necessarily be a failure in that regards or the worst thing in the world because over a long enough timetable, it is possible to bring back all the life anyways. This is honestly more in line with what the gardeners consider themselves to be. They're like, oh, we see everything. We're not bound by, like, petty squabbles of minor instance of time. We're immortal. We, we, we have real perspective on the endless of time. But Sim is the only one who really seems like that. And he's like, yeah, it's no problem. Destroy the entire planet. It's fine. We can bring it back over, like, a couple 10,000 years or so. It's whatever. Um... So yeah, I mean, which brings us to our next issue with the gardeners and their reliability. They are fucking morons and they are full of shit. They're complete hypocrites. They're all like, oh, ha ha, <laughs> stupid, ugly, living creatures with their, their short little lifespans. Ugh. You humans, you only live to be like a hundred years old on a good day. You lack perspective. You can't see beyond yourself and your sense of time. You're, you're trapped b within your, your lived experience. Like, oh my fucking god, bro, the lack of self-awareness is frightening. The gardeners have only been around for 20,000 years, if that. They have a longer lifespan, perhaps it can be extended infinitely, but as of right now, they've only been around for 20,000 years. But it's just a fucking scale, bro. Bacteria live short lives relative to us, and then dogs live longer, and then humans live longer than them. It's all scalable. Everything is fucking scalable. Humans compared to bacteria is an infinitely bigger leap, like, statistically, like, percentage-wise, compared to humans and these fucking moron gardeners. Until you reach literal infinity, it's all the same shit. It's just sliding along a scale. Oh, what, what, you're what, you're, 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 you're 20,000 years old, pussy? You, you think you've seen some shit? You think you've seen? You think you're fucking hard, man? You think you've seen some shit? You think you, you have something to say about the lasting legacy of life on this on this planet? Have you seen a fucking ice age? Have you seen your sun eventually die out and stop providing warmth and light to your planet? Have you seen a freak catastrophic asteroid smash into your planet and cause an extinction event? You so obviously only have the perspective of being alive for 20,000 years and not like millions or billions of years, and yet you trash talk other organisms for being unable to see beyond their own lifespans. This is so cringe, you guys. This is so fucking cringe. The gardeners are posting cringe on Maine, and I will not fucking stand for it. So, the gardeners are huge dumbasses, but what about their what about their values? Their objective is to protect life on the planet, like, um, in a state of state, in, like, stasis. But, like, why? Why? I mean, like, they don't, they don't seem to like living things. They constantly insult living creatures. What is it about a thriving, biodiverse planet that they think will give it meaning or quote-unquote legacy is a word that they use at one point that doesn't mean anything? They don't want intelligent life to prosper or evolve. They don't want humans, because intelligent life, like, capable of making technology and stuff is too dangerous. And might, like, like, fucking whataboutism might throw the planet into chaos. They don't want any evolution to occur at all, really. They just want the current organisms in their current states and cycles forever. What's the point? Do they think that life inherently has value and that by preserving life, like living creatures on the planets, that it gives it meaning. But then why do they also seem to not think that life has value? They're like, oh man, humans, bro, you should like kill yourselves. You're harsh on the vibe, man. 
they, they don't want the old inhabitants of the planet to come back and reoccupy it. What, what, what do they want? I mean, perhaps they themselves wouldn't be able to survive if all other, other life on the planet were to die off. But if it's just about self-preservation, they could have also taken off in spaceships like the old, like the Convergent Domain did. I guess spaceship is like, um, like a lot of effort. It's a lot of fucking effort to, to make a spaceship and, you know, chart a course to a, a... It'd be really funny if the Convergent Domain, um, found Earth. Like, they're like, oh man, that's pretty wild. Eh, that wouldn't make any sense, but... I guess, um, I don't know. It seems like they think it's important that a planet have life on it forever. But they also don't want to... They're, they also don't have any ambitions or plans to, like, go to other planets and then create life there. But also, I don't see what they think is cool about, like, living things on the planet anyways. Why not inhabit an empty fucking rock like most planets? What's not based about that? Why not just fucking die? If you hate intelligent life, you must not value creatures that are capable of even religious and philosophical, moral, existential contemplation, if you don't care about or want the existence of beings that can even have values, like create the, the concept of values, then isn't the universe to you just physics interactions with no meaning? Why not just kill off the planet and shut yourselves off? Why, what, what do you think has value here? You obviously have to have a sense of value beyond simple crude reality. You have to think that, like, living things are cool in some way, and maybe even conscious sentience is cool, maybe. If so, the gardeners stifling all foreign integration and planetary growth in the name of keeping an endless status quo seems pretty stupid and illogical and pointless. Like, all the life you're preserving only exists because at some point, there was evolution and co competition and old species going extinct and so on. I also can't ignore the naivete of acting like everything will be fine forever, bro. Everything, you can't control reality. Like you, you can maybe influence the absolute tiniest fraction of the overall universe and reality a little bit, but in the grand scheme of things, you control nothing. Your planet could get hit by space rubble, and you will all fucking die. Another intelligent species could happen upon your planet and conquer it through military force. Right away. Your sun will eventually die. Nothing lasts forever. You can't, you can't stop things that are totally out of your control. You can't just maintain a status quo forever and put all your value in the fact that it will go on for perpetuity. Because it won't. You have to actually engage with what exists. You can't... You can't control jack shit. The living organisms that you're mocking already do this. They live in ignorant bliss of what will happen after they die, and they simply engage with what is in front of them that exists. That's all that's all that's even physically possible anyways. Gardeners, stop. Stop being cringe. Stop being mad cringe. You guys are dumb. Dumb dummies. Stu stupid juicers. Butt munchers. Also, not to be that guy, but, like, re you're really considering war as the logical alternative? Oh, I really, I really want to protect my planet and all the life on it. Let me start uh, an unnecessary genocidal war with every foreigner that crosses our path. That seems reasonable. That won't, that won't cause any death or destruction on this planet that could have e been easily avoided. The gardeners do this, like, annoying, like, like this shitty politics, like, whataboutism kind of argument, this stupid-ass whataboutism, where they say, like, oh, well, what if all humans turn evil and they also grow their population size in ways that we can't prevent or defend against in the hundreds of years that it would take for them to get there? What then, bro? What if everything miraculously creates a situation in which humans uh, multiply into the billions and we can't do anything about it? despite that taking like thousands of years. Like any moron can what about you with the worst case scenario that makes no sense and is made up. What about a meteor? What about Genova landing on your planet and fucking Sephiroth? What if magic is real and you get attacked by wizards? Or I don't know, here's one. Um, what if you start a war 
with an intelligent species and you fucking lose and they wipe you out. What what about what about what about you kill the 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 hippie like the 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 nature the tree hugger fucking hippie commune of humans that exist in the planet right now, but in like another 100 years or so, all the pl- all the humans that are still back on Earth Earth continues to deteriorate, and they're like, man, we actually legitimately just have to fucking leave now. And then all the super militant types come in much larger numbers and with much more extensive planning to uh, this planet, because they clearly already know it exists, because they know where, um, they know where, uh, the, the hippie cultists fucking went. So, yeah, I mean, what about that? What about, what about you kill these humans, and then the other people from Earth come, and they see that you've killed these humans, and then they fucking decimate you easily. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but oh, no, all of your, all of your whataboutism seem like very, very truly serious, logical arguments. Yeah, that, like, you should take that on Joe Rogan's podcast. I'm sure it'll be a smash hit with, uh, the enlightened debate intellectuals. It'd be one thing if the gardeners were just like, we understand that your species is simply engaging with its biological ignorant instinct to survive, and that's natural and, like, normal and understandable, but we simply need to kill you to protect what's ours because you pose a potential threat that is too significant to ignore or take risks on. But instead, they make up all these fucking asinine brain-dead takes for why humans are actually morally in the wrong for wanting to survive like any other creature, and why they're short-sighted compared to the gardeners who are definitely not short-sighted morons and fuckheads. Anyways, I think that uh, that's enough to seal the books on this one, on this debate. I win, they lose, fucking losers. I bet they won't even debate me on the internet so that random slack-jawed onlookers can decide which log- logical fallacies make them feel the most intellectually superior for believing that actually makes sense. Um, as always, all hail, uh, all hail Queen Mars, our guiding light in these difficult times. That's about it. See ya.